With every wave that breaks and washes ashore, with every gust of wind, with every storm, North Carolina's coastline changes. Sometimes the change is dramatic. More often, the change is too small to be seen right away. It only becomes clear over time. The only constant is that North Carolina's coastline is dynamic. It is ever changing. If we want to evaluate change of the coast, try to understand how things are changing on different time scales, whether it's following a storm, uh, it could be over decades or multiple decades. You have to start with the baseline. You have to know what your coast is, however you define that. And so, researchers from East Carolina University built on almost a century's worth of data, ranging from captain's maps from the late 1800s to aerial and satellite images to create this, the North Carolina Coastal Atlas. This digital definition of the state's coastline not only shows where the land meets the water, it also tells what kind of coast it is. And that coastline is attributed such that you know the type of coast you have. Is it a sandy coastline? Is it a marsh? Is it a swamp forest? Has it been modified? How has it been modified? Is it a vertical structure? Is it a dock? The survey discovered some interesting facts. North Carolina boasts approximately 300 miles of ocean shoreline, but step away from the ocean front, and the survey found the state has the second largest estuary system in the United States. There's almost 12,000 miles of estuary coastline. Combined, that gives North Carolina more than 12,300 miles of coastal shoreline. The estuary coastline includes bays, sounds, and wetlands. Researchers found the state's largest coastal shoreline is dominated by wetlands. Marshes make up the largest type, but the survey found there are also swamp forests and sediment banks, such as river deltas and the banks of streams. Perhaps most important, the North Carolina Coastal Atlas also shows how the coast is changing and what is driving the change. Surprisingly, for all the development along the combined coastline, only about 600 miles, or 5% of the coastline, has been modified. But if we're going to understand how this change influences the development, influences how people are going to move today, tomorrow, 30 years into the future, we need to understand what the baselines are. You know, we've talked about shoreline change, you can look at sea level rise, you can look, look at storm inundation. All of these things are dependent on what the shoreline is, where the shoreline is. As that shoreline retreats with time, say 10 feet, 30 feet, a slight change in inundation will influence those homes, those property owners behind that shoreline. So having some understanding of where the shoreline is and what's influencing that change, is it storms, is it waves? Right? Is it because you're on the intercoastal and all these boats are going through? Right? There's all kinds of interesting processes that are driving changes along the coast. If we can better understand those, you might be a better informed property owner. You might be a better informed developer. In creating the atlas, researchers were particularly focused on the loss of wetlands. That's because wetlands are so important to providing food and shelter for wildlife, protecting the water supply, and for storm protection. But from the study, researchers also found that 92% of North Carolina's coastal shoreline, both ocean and estuary, is eroding. It is often happening at the same time, but at different rates. We're already having you know, houses fall in the ocean because of the movement of our shoreline, so we're very worried about the walling off of our estuaries with seawalls. Uh, that habitat, the fringing marshes along our 12,000 miles of inland coastline is some of the most valuable habitat in the world in terms of fisheries. If we wall off the estuaries with sea level rise, we're not going to have a fisheries in North Carolina. So, you know, we're seeing the impacts right and left everywhere. Um, we're planning infrastructure that's going to be around for the next century. If we don't do it in a smart way, the consequences are going to be quite catastrophic. And so we have the ability now to not only bring in old historic data in new ways and compare changes along the coast and better understanding how the coast is changing, 
but also answer some basic questions like how many docks do we have, how many bulkheads do we have, how many revetments. Um, just being able to understand the state of the system right now and watch trends over time helps you in all sorts of management questions that come up any day. So, you know, it, it's, it's not so much about doing it for any one particular reason as it is more just better understanding the coast that we're all watching evolve and, and, and trying to figure out the right management solutions. Researchers plan to continuously update the atlas to reflect changes caused by new construction, erosion from storms, and sea level rise. But it's important to get to the processes that are driving the change if we want to look to the future and try to understand how it might change in the future. Generally speaking, right, so sort of waving my arms a little bit, if something has been changing for the last 30 years, we see it certainly changing, if not changing more rapidly, the last five years, the last year, certainly the last storm, right. right? You see that sort of consistent change occurring. Now there are, you know, again, we're talking about a dynamic system. And so on the very short time scales, months to, to seasons, you do see, especially sandy shorelines, you know, changing with, with that very short time scale. But it really is sort of um, erosion, accretion, erosion, accretion on the short time scale, but ultimately, over years, it's eroding.